Booker Tov, good morning. We continue to reflect and to meditate on the Shema. And we've been talking about different meanings, different understandings, different teachings and interpretations within just the first and most famous line of Shema. Uh, I'd like to take a short tangent today and reflect on the choreography, on the physical motion that goes with the recitation of Shema. This is a kind of reminder that traditionally we Jews don't just pray with our heads or with our voices. We pray, we pray with our bodies. Uh, I think we have tended in the liberal denominations to neglect this a uh, hundred, 150 years ago when liberal Judaism was taking root in America. Um, I think this bodily prayer felt a little embarrassing because it doesn't follow the polite Western Protestant model of sitting uh, quietly in your pew that has long served as the paradigm for American religion. Uh, but we now in 2020, you know, it's time we break out of that place, that we really embrace the notion that we are embodied prayers, uh, that the Holy One wants us to, to feel our words and offer our prayers, uh, to feel them in our bones and in our guts and to express our praise and our joy and also our, our sorrow and our fear and anxiety, to express it all with our bodies. So there is a important bit of choreography when we sing Shema Yisrael, the opening line, the tradition is to cover our eyes. Some people even cover their eyes by making a shin, which is the first letter of Shema, with their hand and covering their eyes that way. So why? Why do we cover our eyes for Shema? Well, I think the pshat, the most basic and fundamental answer is that Shema means listen, right? So we're focusing with our ears. And it's easier for many of us to listen with our eyes closed. So we're not distracted by all going on within our visual field. To cover our eyes can help us concentrate on the task at hand, which is to listen and to heed. This practice originates with uh, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the person who edited the Mishnah, one of the great sages, uh, one of the greatest of our sages. Uh, Talmud teaches that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi would cover his eyes to block out the distractions of his students who were always bustling around him. Uh, and we follow his lead. This became codified Talmud to Shulchan Aruch to the Code of Jewish Law. But there are other explanations, some interesting ones found on the My Jewish Learning website uh, about Shema. Uh, for instance, according to some commentators, uh, like Rabbi Ezekiel Landau, who lived in Prague in the 17th century, he suggested that we cover, we cover our eyes because it would be difficult to express complete faith in God while looking, while seeing so obviously the pain in the world around us. I'm not sure what to think of that explanation because I think for the most part, uh, for me, an affirmation of God that ignores the pain in the world lacks depth and authenticity. Precisely the challenge is to somehow find 
a path to affirming the Holy One uh, that recognizes everything in the world, that recognizes the beauty and the joy and also the pain and the suffering and the sorrow. So to close our eyes to it uh, doesn't sit well for me. Uh, but again, one of the things about traditions, about symbols, about actions, is that they can mean different things to different people, and, and, and that's, that's the beauty. I want to end with a moving story from that website that ties us back to this action of covering the eyes while saying Shema, which is, you know, for many Jews who do this regularly, it's just a reflex. You hear Shema, you cover your eyes. So Rabbi Yosef Kahneman was the head of the leading Lithuanian yeshiva before World War II. And as the war was coming, uh, many Jewish families uh, sought to protect their children. Uh, adults knew that they, they would not survive, but they thought they might be able to successfully hide their children. And they gave them to monks and nuns and churches and abbeys and convents uh, to keep safe during the war and to hide. Well, Rabbi Kahneman survived the Holocaust, and then he went back to Lithuania because he wanted to find those Jewish children whose parents had hid them and bring them back, uh, reclaim them as part of the Jewish people. The problem, of course, was that many, you know, at that point, uh, four years had passed. They had been young, sometimes babies. They wouldn't hardly remember. But Rabbi Kahneman would walk through the orphanages in Europe. And he would walk in and he would sing, Shema Yisrael. And immediately, some of the children would cover their eyes when they heard the words instinctively. And that is how the rabbi found those who would have otherwise been lost to the Jewish people. Shema is a sign of Jewish pride, and it's a from-the-gut expression of solidarity of who we are. So this morning, reflect on what helps you to concentrate, to feel the words that you utter more deeply. How does, does closing your eyes uh, help you to focus, to offer the words of Shema with true kavanah, with integrity and with intention. What helps you in life to be a better listener? couple things to note today. We'll have our Talmud study at noon. Uh, this Friday night we'll be combining forces with Chavu Rabbi Yachad in Salt Lake City and uh, joining them for our Kabbalat Shabbat. Uh, finally, we'll end with our Omer account. Today we are uh, focusing on Hod Shabi Yisod, on humility and bounding and bonding. Rabbi Jacobson. Humility is crucial in healthy bonding. Arrogance always divides people. Preoccupation with your own needs and desires separates you from others, but humility allows you to appreciate another person and to bond with them. 
Healthy bonding is the union of two distinct people with independent personalities who join for a higher purpose than satisfying their own needs. Baruch atah anai Elohim melech olam asher gashanu mitzvotah v'tzibanu al sefirat haomer hayom arbaim yom shehem chamisha shavuot chamisha yamim laomer. Today is the fortieth day of the Omer, uh, which is five weeks and five weeks and five days uh, of the Omer.